Good morning, guys. We are back with another podcast, MMA Fight Pass. I'm Tom Owens, and I have a uh, special guest today. Uh, this is my friend John Carlton. He's a training partner. He's a friend and uh, kind of a student. He's here to join me today. And uh, I know it's... Yeah, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's John Carlton, like as Tom just said. And I uh, just kind of get kind of new into this journey of jiu-jitsu and... and uh, kind of started late i'm 47 years old and and i'm uh, hooked on it and i just uh you know kind of wish i would start earlier but at the same time you know better late than never and just looking forward to the what everything this brings and this journey and getting ready to go to our first tournament this saturday and all right history that's john carlton uh first of all guys we want to Give a little shout out to uh, Mark Delacruz. This is Mark Delacruz's gym that we're in today. We like to go around and visit the different gyms. This is Vitruvian Martial Arts, and the location is Get Fit, Fit Republic. Okay, not Get Fit, Fit Republic Gym here in Visalia. It's in the. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know where it's at. It's in the old Roller Town parking lot, right off of Chinnawith and 198, right? Yeah, 198. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here at Mark's gym today. Uh, Today's podcast, we're going to focus on this weekend's jiu-jitsu tournament, uh, the Grappling Next. It's going to be in Selma, which most of you already know. A lot of you guys are competing. And, uh, yeah, Corey Cass, he's the, uh, he's the owner of the tournament. We'll be talking to him later on this podcast, too. You guys can get a little, uh, little info that I may not have. And so Saturday, September 28th, guys, probably, what, 9 a.m.? Yeah, starts at 9 a.m., first match. If you're not a competitor and you've never seen a jiu-jitsu tournament, this is a good one to check out. Um, we're going to have most all the local schools and probably schools for, uh, will be traveling too. Uh, it's a good sized tournament. Co Corey knows what he's doing. He's been doing this for a long time. And yeah, there's a lot to tell about Corey, but I'll wait till he gets on. So Chris Ronquillo, you know, he's the, he, he's my pod, my podcast brother. He couldn't be here today and, uh, he had some things going on, but we get the part, big part of this tournament, guys, is we're doing a kidney awareness. And uh, not just myself, but I know many of you out there, you either might know somebody with kidney problems or even yourself might have been through some kidney problems. And uh, we just want to spread the awareness. And, you know, there's always help out there. There's answers. And uh, there, where there's a will, there's a way. So if you have a kidney problem and you're interested in jiu-jitsu, check out the tournament. You know what I mean? Even if not... Look at the local places and the local spots that you can donate to kidney or learn more about it and just see what there is. Now, Chris Ronquillo himself has dealt with kidney issues and he had the idea to do this tournament. So uh, at first we were going to throw the tournament, me and the MMA <laughs> Fight Pass guys. But, you know, as things start going, we realized real quick that we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and since we're such good friends with Corey and Corey's such a nice guy, um, Corey was willing to let us jump in on his tournament that he had going, the Grappling X. And uh, what's cool about Corey is, Corey's not from the area, he's from Temecula, but uh, back in the day in the early roots of Jiu Jitsu and Visalia, we met Corey Cass. He was just a dude traveling around. And uh, it was a small room, probably one of the first Jiu Jitsu rooms in Visalia. And underneath that roof was pretty much every coach in the area. We all trained together at one time. Mark De La Cruz, Tom Knox, Ron Holsey, uh, Luis Gonzalez, just a whole host of different guys. And as time went on, everybody progressed and went their own way. And as you see now, there's all these different schools in the area. It's really tremendous. There's just so too many to name. There's a lot of schools around now compared to then. And uh, so, yeah. If I can chime in here. So we got a couple of shirts here I want to offer to... The first person, actually the first two people that can, ch that can chime in and let us know where we're at, where we're hosting this podcast, uh, you can chime in on um, MMA Fight Pass Live. This first one here, this first shirt here, I'll hold it up for the camera. It's a Breakpoint Contract Killer shirt, um, local sponsor here. So I'm going to offer this for the first person that can chime in where we're at. I have another shirt here. This is from another, another local sponsor, Lou E. Gray. Um, does a lot in the community as far as MMA or as far as jiu-jitsu and grappling and and Tom can maybe tell you a little bit more about Lou but I got a couple shirts here so if you guys know where we're at you want to chime in here first two people is going to get these these shirts here all right so 
if you know the answer, uh, hit us up quick. It's the location of where we're at right now. Um, Lou Gray, I'm going to say a little something about Lou. Lou, Lou supports all the jiu-jitsu uh, in this area and other areas. He's, uh, he's not a political guy. He's down to help kids. He's down to help anybody in the jiu-jitsu community and, and most likely out of the jiu-jitsu community as well. So Lou's making these shirts. want to give him some props on that. Um, we also, before we get going too much here, want to, we need to give some uh, shots out to the sponsors. Okay. So we got Fresno Owner Car, guys. Uh, if you need a car, you need some wheels used or new, and you need a good price, you need somebody that will work with you, go hit up Matty over there at Owner Car, guys. And then <clears throat> we got Eddie from Visalia MMA. Eddie's got all your, uh, your geese, your punching gloves, your bags, any of that stuff you may need. He's the main guy for MMA equipment and apparel. Hit up Eddie. That's in the Sequoia Mall here in Visalia. Then we got Spike and Rail, guys. You want a good steak, you want a good meal, maybe a good salad. Uh, bring your loved one out to a nice meal. I like to go to Spike and Rail. They, they do it right over there. And what else we got here, John? We got Glepler oh. Digital. Okay. Glepler Digital is pretty much for all your live internet streaming. They're the ones that hit up. So big thanks to Glepler Digital. And what do you got there, big guy? You already got someone coming in? Yep, we already got someone coming in. We have Julio Diaz. Julio uh, Diaz, how you doing? Julio Diaz, what's good, Tom? You guys at Mark's Place at Fit Republic, so... Julio just won our first shirt. We got one more. And also, too, if there's any questions anyone has, chime in. I'll be, I have it live right here. And we'll, uh, any questions or comments, feel free as well. So, congratulations, Julio. Yeah, Julio, that shirt, I don't know if it's going to fit you, <laughs> but uh, we'll get you one that does fit you, yeah, big, big yeah, guy. Yeah. I hope you're doing good, Julio. I uh, hope your team and everybody. I'm sure you guys probably got some guys competing this weekend, right? Uh, if so, you guys hit us up, man, because I go blank a lot up here. I'm still new at this whole podcast thing. And, uh, Sometimes I just go blank. Mm -hmm. And if the more questions, the better. Yeah. Especially about this tournament, guys. So let's get back to the tournament a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we'll, we'll be having Corey. We're going to be talking to Corey here pretty quick. Corey is the, uh, as I said, Corey trained with us back in the day. And this was 10, 12 years back. Like I said, we were all under one roof. And uh, Corey's been around this scene, even though he's from Temecula. He's been around the Central Valley's uh, jiu-jitsu and grappling scene since I have and since all these other guys that have that I mentioned that have schools now Corey was right there with us and uh, when we first met Corey he wasn't a, a gi jiu-jitsu guy and our gym, our gym was we were basically judo and jiu-jitsu and when Corey came in he, he had never wore the gi before he was a gi -less grappler basically and he did MMA well real quickly Corey saw the uh, saw the strengths in the gi and the different kind of game that you could play with the gi and then he took on the gi game as well and uh, Corey trained with us for years. He cornered a lot of us, a lot of the guys that fought in the cage. Um, he was a tremendous teacher, a, a very good friend. He was always there for us, always down to help people. So when Corey moved away, he went back home to Temecula. Uh, he came up with the idea for this Grappling X. And a lot of people start tournaments, but uh, you know, not very many of them uh, succeed at it. You know, most people have one or two, and you know, that's it. Corey has built a brand out of this, and uh, what we really love about Corey is he didn't forget us little guys here in the Central Valley. He, I think we were actually one of the first places that he brought Grappling X, and uh, yeah, Corey's always been here to support us, and man, he's doing it again. I'm not sure how many tournaments it is, but uh, he's, he's doing it again, and Jiu Jitsu has grown so tremendously, now we got all these different schools coming to his tournament, and yeah, we want to give a big thank you to Corey mm -hmm. for just for bringing grappling next to us and not forgetting us little people over here. Uh, Corey's got a lot of other things going too, if you want to, he's got one of the only uh, seamless mat companies that he's doing right now. And uh, it's a different style of mat for your gym. Uh, instead of tatamis with the lines and the gaps in the mat, he's got a seamless mat that he can do on the floor and on the wall. Really beautiful, easy to clean. Mm -hmm. um, you're not gonna be breaking your nails and things like that. And, uh, yeah, that's another thing that Corey's into. He's in, he, Corey's got his hands in all kinds of stuff. But this weekend, it's the tournament. And uh, I'm not competing myself. This guy is. <laughs> now, what do you think about the tournament, man? Uh, John's been training. He's not competing, but John's been – he's new at jiu-jitsu. Uh, he's fallen in love with jiu-jitsu like a lot of people. Him and his yeah. son are doing it. Uh, he does want to compete in the future, so he kind of helped us with a friend that is competing this weekend. And uh, his name's Eric Lindley. He's going out for his first – jiu-jitsu match ever you know what I mean and we had the honor of working with this uh, this young man and you know what I mean uh, seeing him build his way up 
to this point, Saturday, he's been training for a while. You've had a lot of help with Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about Eric going into this tournament for the first time? Um, yeah, hold, hold off on that note. One quick sec here. I got more people chiming oh, in. People. That, that might have, okay. Yeah, more people are uh, coming in. In fact, we just got Martin Gomez. Uh oh. Uh, hello, Martin. Local fighter here. I think he might be getting ready to fight again next month. Yes, Martin. Again, we got one more shirt left here. This is a local sponsor, uh, Lou E. Gray. Little uh, little uh, jujitsu cross here. So for the next person that can tell us where we're hosting this podcast, um, this shirt is yours. So you just got to chime in on MMA Fight Pass, and uh, so no answers there. Uh, just yeah. the one, and then okay. uh, so some people kind of logged on a little bit late, so maybe they didn't know. That's why that's I went okay. off that again. Okay. Uh, as far as Eric Lindley and get, helping him get ready for that, um, my hats off to Eric. He uh, he's 46 years old, getting ready to do his first tournament again, and I, I'm like, that's. Um, I, I just think that's is awesome. Is this his first tournament? This is his first tournament. This is his first tournament. Yeah, and he's he's geared up for it. Uh, he's he's signed up. Uh, he's all in. And my journey, like Thomas saying, jiu-jitsu started about a year ago. I got into it for my son. My son's uh, in high school. Wanted to get him um, maybe into some high school wrestling and some stuff. And I can remember the first time that we rolled. We were out there at Farmersville at KO. And Tom was our instructor. And there was a young younger guy out there, um, Jesus, about 135 yes. pounds. I'm 205. And he mauled me, and I felt I, you know, I, I think a lot of people with egos would have left like kind of mad, pissed off. I left excited. I go, man, I got choked out by a guy that's that's half my size, half my strength, and I, and I believed in it from that point forward. Right then, I go, man, I, I got to learn this thing, and um, that's kind of where you know my journey is 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 taking me. And and just uh, in my short time, I've you know I've seen myself already progressing. My confidence level is 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 way up there. And so um, we've been helping this Eric, Eric Lindley, get ready for this this competition on Saturday, and uh, it's it's awesome. It's it's a yeah, great I'm journey. The camaraderie is amazing. Oh, we yeah. all, you know, you kind of all band together, and and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we've been having some good times. Uh, you know, jujitsu. More, I mean, a lot of people hear jujitsu, or you know, they think it's a martial art. They never train in martial arts, and they think it's some kind of. A lot of people are super intimidated to go into a gym. You know what I mean for the first time, and once you go into a jujitsu gym and you start to meet people uh you you find out real quick man it's just, it's not just some fighting art or anything like that it's a it's a real camaraderie you if you stick with it and you know you get through those first few months which are pretty hard a lot of people quit within those first few months and uh you stick with it and you and you meet these guys and you start hanging out with them and man yeah jujitsu can be one of the biggest stress relievers out there it's you know what I mean? Yeah. If you, for people that have depression or maybe anxiety, a lot of people stress nowadays. I know, I know me for one. Man, stress is just—it seems like it's always there. But what I do know, I could be having the worst day, uh, depressed, anxiety, stress, whatever, tired. And man, when I go into the to the dojo and get on that mat with my friends, and even if I'm tired and I just get beat up for the night, when I leave that mat, man, it's a great feeling. Yeah. You yeah. you feel like you've let everything go. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't you know what I'm, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of our students, a lot of guys that I met in jiu-jitsu, they don't have any interest in fighting or competing. They're just looking for something like that. You know what I mean? They're looking for friends. Mm -hmm. They're looking for family to hang around. But uh, it was years of me doing jiu-jitsu before I ever even thought about doing a tournament like this one. You know, um, I was just always scared to do a tournament. And I, I literally trained for probably, probably like eight years before I ever did any type of jiu-jitsu tournament. Mm -hmm. And it was an in-house tournament at Pacific Martial Arts with Matt Smith. And uh, Matt Smith and his team, they'll be there this weekend as well. Matt's, Matt's one of the, uh, he's one of the first guys that I saw actually promoting tournaments in the area. And he would have these little in-house tournaments and I believe he still does. And uh, it was a great way to, just to see where I was at, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and to learn a little lesson. And uh, we never, back then there was never any local tournaments. There was a judo tournament here and there, but there was no BJJ, so. In those days, if you if, if any of us local guys from the Valley wanted to go to a tournament, we would have to go to like Santa Cruz or we'd have to go down to LA or we'd have to go to San Francisco. We were always, uh, we were just always traveling to get to these tournaments. And so to see these young guys now uh, having this tournament right here, mm -hmm. we just had the IBJJF here in Fresno. And like I said, Corey comes, you know, I think he comes twice a year. And yeah, there's tournaments all over the place now. And it's, it's really, really cool. And your son's training and uh these young bucks were were training man they're they're learning so quick it's it seems like a whole different game oh. uh jiu-jitsu has evolved tremendously in the last 10 years i'm still just an old school ba basic technique guy but when i go around to these gyms and 
you know, me and John and his son will travel around to these different gyms. We don't really stay set with anybody. Like, uh, my idea is I'm friends with all these guys. Mark Dela Cruz, Dan Camarillo, Tom Knox, Luis Gonzalez. Um, Mo. Uh, yeah, Mo uh, from Trifecta. We're friends with everybody, so, man, we just take advantage of it, and we go around, pick up a class here and there. And then we have our own little spot in the garage with mats. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we like to do about it. So... What do you think about this tournament and like your son competing later on down the road? Because I know he's expressed already that he wants to do a jiu-jitsu tournament. Like as a parent, yeah. and now you're, yeah. you're getting a good eye of this jiu-jitsu yeah. and you're seeing people get choked and arm locked mm -hmm. and thrown on the, on the ground. Uh, I mean, how do you feel about having your son going into that for the first time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's bittersweet. It's, he's been playing basketball since the fourth grade. He's a junior now. And he said, Dad, I I'm, I'm, think I'm done with basketball. I want to wrestle. And he wants to do a jiu-jitsu tournament. So part of me is like, yeah, son, go for it. But then again, you know, I've been on the other end of some chokes and some arm bars and triangles. It's like, oh, I don't want my, my son going to that. But it's, you know, um, at least everybody in my circle that we've been with, very respectful. I, I've never really been injured. People are very respectful. Um, I leave my ego at the door. Someone sets me in something. I'm tapping right away. I'm not going to make him crank it and stuff. So, you know, my son's a big... Uh, you know he's he's definitely up for it, but as a dad, yeah, it's it's kind of nerve wracking. Some of the um, the my biggest battles have been against some of these young bucks. I can remember rolling at KO out of that that one gentleman was it Matthew or his brother from uh, Speedies? He's yeah. 15 years old. Yes, I'd never been rolled up like a that in kid. my life. 15 year old uh, kid. <laughs> he, gave, he he handled both of us oh that day. God. Yeah, he's a uh, he's one of my old students, but he's a he's a student of Luis Gonzalez now and uh yeah young kid 15 is uh he's won a couple world championship titles but yeah he came in and taught us a little lesson oh my gosh <laughs> it just seems like these young guys one they pick up things so fast they don't have a lot of bad habits to to unlearn and then and then they have that uh the flexibility and and then just the agility and then of course the cardio again is another thing so you put all that together and these, these some of these young guys are killers yeah that's true and on top of that like what the, what the young younger not and not just young kids but the young men and whoever you are now in the valley when you when you go into a gym you're i mean you're training under somebody that's already been through the fire mm -hmm. you know what i mean they've already been through several years of training with different coaches and a lot of going out to tournaments and getting on the mat there's so many competitors in the valley now that they're not just competing here they're competing all around the united states and all around the world and it and i mean we're doing good our our local guys uh, they're doing real good. It, it's amazing, man. I just I can't I can't say it enough how amazed I am with how jujitsu has grown. And uh, I remember when I f the first tournament I did that was big, like traveling. Uh, not, you know, I did the in-house tournament, and then later on I wanted to do some big tournaments. And man, I still I still get nervous if I compete. But I remember that first time I was so nervous for the for a month building up to it, then three weeks, then two weeks, and that last week. Uh, you know, you have no idea who you're going to go against out there. You're you're traveling miles to get to this place. And you see a coach in a guy's corner, and uh, it might be somebody. Like for me, I, I would see coaches in these guys' corner, and it would be somebody like one of my heroes. You know what I mean? Like one of the Gracie brothers or mm -hmm. one of these champions from Brazil. And then you see their student, and right, you know, right away that can play a big part in your head too. But uh, You feel like you don't want to let him down kind of a thing? Or... Yeah, for me, not really wanting to let them down, just just scared more yeah. than anything. I was yeah. just I was just scared to do these tournaments. But what I found out real quick, what you get wins and you get losses in these jujitsu tournaments, and uh, the, actually the be the greater lessons that I've ever learned in jujitsu tournaments is comes from a loss. Mm -hmm. Normally, uh, when you win, it's it's great. It's a great feeling and everything, and uh, it's great for your kid to win and whoever you are to win is a great feeling. But when you get defeated in one of these deals, and it could be any sport, but especially in jiu-jitsu, because you're having to tap out to either a choke hold or an arm lock or an ankle lock. These are these are moves that can disable a person in, mm -hmm. you know, in a real situation. So it's pretty humbling. And when you come out of a loss, if you don't quit, like a lot of people, you can go back into the gym and you can work on a game plan. You can work on the moves that you got caught in. You can, you know, you can better yourself that way. So. Yeah. What, what do they say? You either you either win or you learn. Now, now on that note, I I have in fact I was watching that video a while back. Now, what, how do you feel about this as a, as a seasoned martial artist instructor? It's kind of in everywhere, every sport now. We're starting to re get rewarded. You get a trophy, or even if you get last place, all that. And then we were showing that one video. There's like, hey, parents, I know it's gonna be hard, but you know what? You 
um, accept the loss. You don't need a trophy for the. I mean, you remember that video we were yeah, watching? How, yep, do you, how do you feel excellent. about that? I love it, man. And uh, it's, I think it's hard. Kids don't really realize that, you know, they're just going to play in a game. Um, I think it's actually harder on, like, moms and dads, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah, to, yeah. to see their kid. They want them to win so bad, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they don't want to see them lose. But I'm telling you, like, just like the student, of even the parents that go there, you're giving your, your, your child, you're giving him an edge on other people in life, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? He's going to be more secure. As you, have you seen? He's going to mm -hmm. uh, have a way higher self-esteem. And, and if something does happen and he does get picked on and, you know, he can't talk his way out of it or get out of it, he'll, he will be able to protect himself, your son or your daughter. Jiu-Jitsu is definitely mm -hmm. one of the most realistic martial arts. I mean, there, there's tons of styles out there, karate, kung fu, kickboxing. There's all these different martial arts art styles. But in my opinion, uh, if, you're, if your child or yourself really has to defend yourself, there's a very good chance that it's going to go down to the ground, and that's where wrestling and jiu-jitsu come into play. Yeah. So you've trained other martial arts, haven't you? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did kempo karate in high school, and then I did two years of aikido um, a couple years back. And I think every martial art has its 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 purpose. It has its you know it's it's it fulfills you know what what you're looking for. But to me, the jitsu is just. Uh, to me, it's the ultimate. It's just, you can throw out your strength. You can throw out, um, I don't know, you kind of can throw out your ego too because you're going to have a lot of humbling moments, more humbling moments than, than victories. But it's just something about just grappling. And I mean, you know, back like thousands of years ago, you know, you're just, it's just you and another person, you know, face to face, hand to hand, you're grappling. You get each how, how does sweat. it differ, John? Like, uh, I know you did Aikido, and you trained with some with a really good Aikido yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, from that Aikido to Jiu-Jitsu, how how does it differ for you? For I somebody think, like, uh, say you're a guy out there and you're in a traditional martial arts, Taekwondo, yeah, uh, whatever it may be, Aikido, yeah. Hapkido, and mm -hmm. you haven't done Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, what? How do you feel about that going from one of those traditional arts onto the Jiu-Jitsu mat? Yeah, I, I felt how I felt uh, with with Aikido. It, I think jiu-jitsu is a lot more realistic. Aikido, it's a little bit more of a controlled environment, a lot of flashy stuff. Um, but when you have someone, an opponent that is, you know, it's not a controlled environment, they're doing everything they can to physically hurt you or kill you, to me, a lot of the, for me, a lot of the Aikido stuff wasn't so realistic as far as to a jiu-jitsu. After a while, a lot of it just becomes instinct. You, you automatically are putting yourself in good position. You know, you're going for the neck. You're going for a submission, and it's kind of just second nature after a while. And where um, even a lot of the karate I did, it was a lot of point style karate. To where I think it all like what's what's the quote Mike Tyson says? Everything changes once you get hit in the face or something. And yeah. it's kind of true. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Now, when you came, when you came into uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with that Aikido knowledge, did, were you ever? Uh, were you able ever able to use any of those techniques, like the wrist locks and stuff? Have Have you ever tr did you try to incorporate those? Yes, I the probably what translated best was the wrist locks. Um, you know, you get a lot of like the law enfor law enforcement style type wrist locks, which are some deadly, very deadly. You remember, you used to tell you I've got seen videos of it where Michael Tan, um, rest in peace, but he was a legendary, one of the best Aikido practitioners in the world, and used to bounce with him, I think, or I know Mark, yeah. Mark used to bounce in fact, Mark's told me stories, Yes. where you would have a guy six foot five, 300 pounds, and Michael Tan was probably, what do you think, five, six? Maybe 100, 135 pounds? Maybe, and Michael Tan, those guys would be unruly, and Michael, t my, Mark would tell me, hey, when people get really unruly, they'll send Michael in there, and then these, these big guys would be laughing at him, he would get them kind of in a, and they'd be literally walking on their pinkies like, ow, 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 yes. you know, like a little kid. And he'd just usher them out and never even break a sweat. Yeah, so. it, it was it was interesting bouncing at that bar uh, myself. It, it, dude, it was basically a bar full of, uh, of jujitsu guys. Killers. That were bouncers. Like every bouncer in there, we were we were all training, you know, either Muay Thai or mainly jujitsu. But uh, yeah, Michael Tan, he was uh, very unsuspecting. You see on, uh, like I always see it on YouTube, like, uh, Aikido master goes against an MMA guy, or you, you see these so-called masters. Uh, Mr. Tam was actually, I mean, very, very pro proficient. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, whenever fights would happen in that bar, like us jiu-jitsu guys, we would always be instinctively to grab a person, and it would usually end up into some kind of a, more of a brawl. And, and Tan, I, I've seen him personally in there with a huge guy, man. The guy probably 250, 260, but full-grown man, big dude. And uh, they start, he gets in a fight with another guy. Next thing I know, Tan has him in one of those 
I don't know how he even grabbed him. I don't know. I don't know what went down. He has him in this like two finger little finger hold, walking the dude out on his tippy toes just effortlessly. Mm-hmm. And the guy, you know, the guy went right along with him, had no problem going with him. But yeah, rest in peace, Michael Tan. He was one of our guys. But yeah, traditional martial arts. I I, I like them all. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Well, you they know, all serve their own purpose. That um. So the the award ceremony was the MMA Fight Pass award ceremony that you, we went to last, uh, I believe it was no December, you know, and and it was really interesting because that's when I was brand new into this journey, and you took me along, um, and I got to hang out and stuff. But if you didn't even know what you were there for, someone just placed you in that room, and you seen these guys, you you would, it's just amazing. A room full of killers. Yeah, but they're but you the know nicest what? people in the Humble world though. People, but it's like they, they, they their chest is out of a little bit higher, head held a little higher. It's like yeah. the confidence, not not cockiness or arrogant arrogance. I was sitting next to Javier Ayala, which is um, actually beat Frank Mir. I mean, he's fighting for the Bellator heavyweight yes, he title. Is. I was next to him, and he was the nicest guy in the world. I would have had no idea he was an MMA fighter until I had to get it out of him. He was just a normal guy. But their confidence, and you can just tell, it's like th- these guys are it, – It's it, it translates not just on the mat but in life, and I'm, I'm a big believer of that. Yes, and man. That's right, guys. I'm so wrapped up in the jiu-jitsu talk right now. We also got the Valley Fight Series. Uh, it's on Saturday? Saturday night, guys. We're gonna have a lot of oh, at the Wake House. Yep, the Reedley Wake House, guys. Uh, if you want to see so. some good local MMA action, we got a few of our of our local guys that are, you know, working their way up the ranks quickly. And man, we not just jujitsu in the valley. MMA fight pass. There's a huge MMA scene in the valley. Yeah. And uh, there always has been right along with the jujitsu. And you, you got kind of two sets of people. Um, you know, some of the gyms are more MMA based, like mm-hmm. Team KO in Farmersville. Mm-hmm. Some of the gyms are way more gi jiu-jitsu, and then you've got the ones that are in between, where they're where they're doing both things. And uh, some of the gyms have a wrestling coach, a boxing coach, a kickboxing coach, and a jiu-jitsu guy. So back in the day, we didn't have that. So yeah, the uh, the amateur MMA scene is is going real cool. Weedley Rakehouse. Wake House, called? I believe the Wake Ridley House. Ridley Wake House. Yeah, yeah, you can go for a good time out there. They they had those. I went to those uh, those fights a couple months back, and I'm telling you, the local guys cleaned house. They did. There was, uh, I know, you, um, what's the name of the place in Hanford Valley Fight Club? They yep. had uh, they had three fighters. They were three and zero on theirs. Uh, Martin Gomez at a Team KO fought a great fight. It went down to like a decision. And um, and then you had um, Omar Renault went and yep. uh, and and clean house and they were fighting guys from down south, um, all the way up north. And I'm, and I'm telling you, the valley is very it's special. There's a lot. Of yeah, it it's really is something else. And man, since we, uh, I'm just lucky that I that Archie Tovar and Chris Ronquillo invited me in on this journey with this MMA fight pass. Mm-hmm. Um, how long have we been going now, Arch? We're going on three years in November, and man, the time has really flown by. And uh, I'm I'm so thankful that I was invited in on this because through the MMA Fight Pass, I've been, man, I've been meeting so many good people. We get to travel around to all these gyms, and uh, you know, I thought I knew most of the coaches, but there are so many gyms, and they they welcome us right in. They offer training to us. We get to see their students train. We get to get on the mat with these guys and learn something. I learn something new at every school I go to, whether it's a simple. Muay Thai technique from a world champion Thai fighter, or it's a simple choke that I, maybe I knew already, and one of the coaches is breaking it down different. So, yeah, it's been a tremendous journey. Uh, John here is part of our squad. He's a new guy into our squad, kind of the rookie, and uh, he's going. He's been going along with us. And, and what do you think, man? You know what I? Like I said, um, we got what, questions coming in or what? Yeah, I was just kind of looking at different comments and stuff but we still we're still waiting for the next person can tell us where we're where we're hosting this event at and i have like i said i have the one more shirt for you guys here where the event is gonna be guys it's pretty i mean i'm already catching tom trying to chime in where we're at yeah tom no i can't figure it out it's not for you so so back to your question though one of like i said i'm again i'm 47 years old but one of the one of the people that got me into this sport want to compete is actually Archie. He's behind the scenes doing the camera, but he's he's my age and he competes. I mean, he goes down to LA and, and I mean, he competes at a high level. He's a, a, a great wrestler. His whole family is, is the wrestling pedigree and I think he's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. And it's to see, um, because I'm, I'm the, you know, I grew up playing ice hockey and then football, but I 
didn't get everything out of my system. I still want to compete. You know, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go do a flag football league, or I'm not going to go. I, I'm not a softball player. I still want to compete, and um, you know, accomplish some things myself. So I, I, I just love seeing people my age compete. You know, that's why you have the Masters now. And um, hey, yep. I think it's awesome. And there's a lot of old guys competing. Okay, so oh. speaking of competitors, guys, we got a uh, we got an MMA competitor stepping in right now. Introduce yourself, young man. My name is John Voorhees. Say, how do you pronounce your last name again? Jonathan Voorhees. Okay, uh, Jonathan Voorhees. You're, you're training right here with Mark De La Cruz. Is this, uh, is this your home gym? Yes, sir. Now, what's pleasure. going on? Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, okay. nice to meet you. Nice as to meet well, you just had a fight a couple days ago, right? Yes, I did. Nice, nice. Yes. I came up with the L, but uh, you know that's what happens when you take a last-minute fight, overweight. But I have uh, utmost respect to my opponent. Uh, he was a great wrestler, great pressure. Um, just made. Who a did you fight? Of, uh, huh? Who did you fight? Uh, Anthony Mata. Anthony Mata. Now this was at the five five nine fights, right? Yes, sir. So, like I said, the the, the local MMA scene is going off the hook. Jeremy Luchow, five five nine fights. Now that was your first fight. Yes, sir. And how long have you been training? Uh, about a year. Yeah. About a year. So, wow. like I was saying, I didn't longest. I didn't compete for like eight years in jiu-jitsu. You got these young kids, <laughs> one year in, jumping in that cage. That is crazy. So before you started doing MMA and jiu-jitsu, had you wrestled or anything? Yes, in that I wrestled high in high school. So you started with wrestling, that yes. was your first primary art? Yes. And now that you're in here with Mark and these jiu-jitsu guys, you're mainly training for MMA or do you do gi jiu-jitsu as uh, well? No, I mainly train for MMA. I don't really like gi, the handles. That's yeah. your thing though, you go for the gi list? Yeah. Right on, so what is your future of MMA, bud? Uh, well, I'm, What's the plan? I'm going to go pro and uh, hopefully I can make it into Bellator and uh, become world champ, that's my ultimate goal. What yeah. weight do you fight at, bud? Uh, 145. 145. And how old are you, John? Uh, 18. 18. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. Dude, when I was 18, I was barely turned 18. Wow. spray painting on walls and running around with a bunch of hoodlums. But just, the, just. <laughs> that was me at 16. That was 16. <laughs> but the thing is, like you said, you you rolled jujitsu for eight years where you got in a tournament. Me too. I mean, yeah. I'm sometimes I still get nervous to get on the mat. Just, but me 18 well. years old to get in the cage with another man, not just jujitsu, but striking knees, elbows. I mean, that's. Uh, Two years ago, like, could you ever see yourself doing this? Um, I, I wanted to. I just didn't have the finances to be able to do it. And then um, I got recommended by a friend and uh, just kind of fell in love with it after my free trial here at the gym. Wow. Right on. That's awesome, man. So awesome. So do you ever, like, this jiu-jitsu tournament coming up, do you... Are you interested in jujitsu? Ju 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 do you oh, yeah. watch it? I, uh, I did a gi tournament, and I only did maybe like three weeks in gi because um, I'm more of a no gi guy. And um, you know, I ended up taking third, um, which isn't bad. But I don't really uh, do a lot of no gi tournaments. But since I uh, lost to a submission uh, this last time, I'm going to start doing a lot more. I was actually going to uh, do the grappling X this Saturday, yeah. but instead I got offered a fight with a uh, Valley Fight Series. So I'm going to be fighting again this weekend, two weeks. Oh, jeez. Okay, you're fighting again this weekend. Yes. Nice, really? dude. Yes. So that's a pretty quick turnaround, wow. uh, right? Last weekend to this weekend. Did you take very much damage last week? No, I'm no bruises, nothing. I wasn't even sore the next day. Wow. That's tremendous, man. Two two yeah. fights in a week, dude. That's that's pretty good. That's awesome. Gosh. And do you know anything about your opponent this weekend? Um, who well, who are you fighting? Uh, his name's Jose, and I can't really pronounce his last name. I don't want to butcher it, but uh, yeah. Guadarrama. Guadarrama. Is he from he uh, here? From uh, he's from Danuba. He's from Danuba. Okay. His gym is uh, Iron Fist. Okay, from old Iron Fist gym. All right. I don't really know much about my opponent. Um, you know, I expect him to be as good as everyone else. I underestimated my opponent last time because he was a shorter guy, and, but he was heavier, and he was a really good wrestler. So, um, you know, I'm just expecting, you know, the same thing. That's a lesson that uh, many of us have to learn. I, I'd say almost all of us have to learn. Don't ever underestimate your opponent. Now, I, I have a question on that because I, I hear that too. I hear even like John Jones or some people say, I underestimate it. But what can you actually do to underestimate your opponent? I mean, do you train not as hard? Not, I mean, how? There's a lot of ways, man. Uh, maybe you're having real good success in the gym. Maybe you've been out in a tournament and, uh, and you won already. Usually it happens after you've won. Like, uh, I see a lot of guys, like, they have a great little beginning. And it, maybe it's not luck or it's just skill. But they'll win, like, their first couple fights. You know what I mean? And I, I can tell you from me, I won the, uh, my first two fights. And after that, you kind of do get this little uh, little cocky little thing on your shoulder. Well, I know I did anyways. And I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? I won these first two cage fights. I'm, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? And once you have that in your head, 
even if you don't realize it, I think you can slow down yeah, on your yeah, training. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have other people around you. Oh, you you did it, man. You're doing this and you're doing that and you're going to go here and there. I think you learned the uh, last weekend, yes. man. You you can never underestimate. You always need to try to push yourself further. So if you're winning fights, you even got to train harder because yeah. you're going to have a guy that's already watching and, you know, he's, he's coming for that bullseye on your back. So, so, John, as an amateur cage fighter do you work go to school or are you able to put all the time into this you want um well i can't put all the time into it that i want um it's really hard to find a job so i'm just going to school uh, receiving financial aid and, okay uh, paying for my uh membership and you know just in case you know gotta yeah. have a backup plan just sure what if i get injured and i'm out for a year like mm -hmm. my pro career takes off but you know goes makes a downfall you know i yeah. always got to have a backup plan that's right man a lot of guys don't yeah. a lot of guys don't they i've seen it personally yeah. guys start small here and make it all the way up to the high, even to the ufc and uh man anything can go can go wrong in this game well young man uh we wish you the best in your fight this weekend we'll, we'll be back to talk with you some more we're going to get a little call in with Corey right now it was an honor to meet you bro thank yeah. you and man thank you very much. good luck two fights in, in a week Saturday. yes yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to uh, i remember john Voorhees, and i'm gonna have to uh to follow you and 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 i'm looking forward to watching your career all right not a problem thank you thank Thanks, you bro, brother Man, two fights in a row, back two to back. Two fights in a row, and that's, dude, I would have never. Oh well, that's crazy, man. That's. It can happen like that too. It, it can happen like that. Uh, my first two fights, I the first fight was in Gladiator Challenge, and if you come out of a fight like unscaven, you could do it. You know, a week from then. So yeah, I, a lot of props to this young man. Anyhow, guys, let's see if we can get a hold of Corey right now. See if I can figure this out. Here we'll get a live call with Corey. And any of you guys got any questions or opinions or answers for this weekend's tournament? We'll talk to the man right here. Let's see if we can get him here. Can you hear that? Would it be better like that? <laughs> Corey Cass, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, how you doing, bro? Good. How are you? I'm doing excellent, man. Couldn't be better. Uh, sitting here in a yeah. sitting here in a jujitsu gym, shooting it up. Are you on the road? Nice. Yeah, we're, we're leaving now. All right, man. Well, uh, we've already been telling people all about you. I've told some stories about Corey Cass and uh, the legendary Corey Cass. And how you started this Grappling X, bro, and how you come, you, you never forgot the valley and you bring this tournament over here. Give us a little rundown on the Grappling X and how you got the idea of it. Okay, so, you know, we were, I opened a gym in 04, and uh, there were so many gyms opening up, you know, with the Ultimate Fighter starting in 05. Um, you know, we've seen that uh, there was. It was a tough market with so many gyms opening up. So I started hosting events, figured that the more gyms that were out there, it was easier to host events than, uh, you know, have to just compete for students all the time. So um, the first event we did was uh, Under Grappling X was in uh, May of 2008. And we've actually been coming to Fresno since uh, July 2008. So, you know, we've been coming up there for 11 years already hosting events in the Central Valley. That's amazing, dude. 10 years of this already. Would you? Did you ever think it was going to come to something like this? Um, you know, when we... You know, we've been training for a long time. And when we got started, there wasn't that many tournaments. You know, you would have... You'd almost get ready for like one or two tournaments a year. You know, back then, you know, uh, IBJ Jeff wasn't even really hosting events in the United States. If you wanted to compete in the Moon Jaws, you had to go to Brazil. So, like, you had a couple local tournaments, and, you know, at those events, if you got 200 competitors, that was a really big event. Now, you know, the big events could get over 1,000, 2,000 competitors, you know, so... It has came a long way since then. It sure has, man. It's, came a, it's just tremendously changed. Uh, 
Now, I know when we first met you, Corey, when you came into town, I don't even know why you came into Visalia, but uh, when you came in, you you weren't yet a gi jiu-jitsu player. You had MMA experience and you had uh, submission grappling. Um, where did you actually get your start in this whole thing? Um, so I first started training jiu-jitsu in eight at a Pedro Sauer affiliate gym in uh, northern Utah. And then uh, in... Uh, 2000, I moved to Southern California, and I started training with uh, Javier Vasquez and Millennia, but we only trained Noki. And so uh, when I moved to Visalia back in uh, 2002, uh, I had actually never put the key on until I came in to train with you guys. And the first time I ever rolled in a key, I actually uh, rolled against Melise. And so that was the first time I had ever actually rolled in a gi. And so uh, until then, I was just purely no gi in MMA. And then, uh, you know, in 2002, when I started training with you guys, after that, then I uh, really took to the gi and uh, uh, spent most of my time training for the next probably eight, nine years, a lot of uh, gi jitsu and kind of backed off the MMA after that. You know, uh, I didn't, I fought in 06, and then after that I never fought again. Yeah, I remember that. You won the uh, WEC belt, if I remember right. Um, yeah. Corey the legend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, so, I mean, I always talk about it. Uh, the jiu-jitsu that we were playing back then, you know, with the gi, gi le sang gi, the game that we were using was more of a basic uh type of a style ha, what do you think about the evolution of jiu-jitsu and in your eyes what's changed the most in these tournaments with the with the young guys that are competing and the adults well uh, to me the game hasn't changed all that much because um, when we were Noki we were already doing all the leg locks and stuff you know that was kind of uh, maybe for the G players the leg locks that came along but all the Noki guys were already doing all the uh, doing all the leg submissions and all that stuff, heel hooks and everything. Because the first day I went to Millennia, I got heel hooked. So we we learned right from the beginning to watch your legs and watch your feet. Uh, so you know, with the I guess with the changing of the rules and the scoring, then the game will evolve. You know, if you take something away, then it will make uh, it will make the rules of jujitsu change. But you know, the game really hasn't changed that much for me because of we were already doing leg submissions and all that stuff. Yeah, I know you were one of the first guys that I ever that ever heel hooked me. Um, you you yeah. definitely yeah you came down and uh, Javier Vasquez. A lot of you guys don't know who that man is just get on youtube and google him uh get on youtube and google him oh i didn't <laughs> catch that get on youtube and search javier vasquez uh he was the king of the yeah. cage champ right he was he was this guy was tremendous yeah he was uh i i think all the belts he won he won uh at one time i think he had king of the cage gladiator challenge and then he went and fought in japan and he had the shooto belt also he beat Roman of Sato and and had the, the shooto belt also that's freaking awesome. He beat Ruben yeah. Asado. That's freaking awesome. Um, how long yeah, did you train with Javi for, bro? Well, um, dude, I'm still under Javi now. So, you know, I started with him uh, like 2000. I think I started under him in 2001. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, Corey, the main reason we got you on the line, of course, is this weekend. And uh, I've talked a little bit about your tournament, but you got the fine details. And uh, can you just talk about the tournament this weekend? Um, what's involved with it? If people want to go check it out, or I'm sure the uh, the deadline to sign up is already is already over, guys. But give us a little info on the tournament, bro. Yeah, so we got a, a G and OT tournament this weekend at uh, Selma High School. So um, we'll be up there. Um, the events for all ages, uh, kids and adults. We also are doing a fundraiser at the event. Um, uh, Chris Ronquil is uh, 
they're hosting a fundraiser and we're going to be auctioning off and raffling and selling uh, MMA products and, and different stuff and raising money for uh, the Chris Ron Keel Foundation to bring uh, awareness to uh, to uh, kidney issues and stuff. So uh, it'll be an amazing event this weekend. It's on Saturday at uh, Selma High School. The tournament starts at 9 a.m. If anybody wants to come over, we'll be over there. Um, the tournament will go from about 9 to a little after 3 p.m. Uh, gi and no gi. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing event. That's awesome. When you... When you're traveling around with these tournaments, are you just going in California, or you, do you hit the whole United States? Okay, so the busiest year that we ever did was 2011. We hosted 29 tournaments. And in that year, we went Portland, Denver, San Antonio, Sacramento, Fresno, Long Beach, San Diego, Morro Bay. So most of our events right now are in California, but we do have a event coming up uh, in November out in Arizona we're going to host an event in Yuma and uh, we are going to start traveling again um, we had our equipment uh, stolen in 2013 so when that stuff got stolen we had to pull back and only cover uh, the California uh, dates and cities because we didn't have all the equipment to travel like we were doing before but now that you know we've got all the equipment back and everything we're going to start branching out and covering the other cities outside of california again yeah so you guys see right there uh this man has all the knowledge to run a tournament it's going to be a great tournament it'll be well run yeah. it's going to be well run there'll be good referees it's it's going to be a it's going to be a good day guys if you haven't seen a jiu-jitsu tournament this is one to go to uh, Gi and Gilas. Explain that for people that don't know, bro. Gi and Gilas. Well, the, uh, the Gilas is kind of more what you're used to, like if you're watching MMA. So Gilas is, um, you know, the wrestling with submission. You know, and, uh, the Gi is like the uniform, kind of like the uh, what karate guys would wear, you know, because that's what people are used to seeing is, you know, the Gi, the kimono. And so uh, the only difference is the rules are just a little bit different from Gi to no Gi. The scoring is the same, but, uh, uh, you know, in the Gi, you have uh, not as many submissions and stuff. But pretty much uh, they're the same as far as, you know, if you can roll one, you can roll both. Do you have uh, more competitors in one or the other? Uh, gi, um, most of the time, Gi are bigger numbers. Even the... You know, like the Worlds and stuff, uh, the key tournaments are bigger than uh, no key numbers. All right, man. Well, we're going to see you on Saturday, Corey. Um, as always, man, it's, it's, it's been a real pleasure to have, you know, gotten to know you and known you throughout these years. been an honor to, to know Corey Cast, man. And we look forward to Saturday. We'll be there bright and early, and uh, we'll help in any way possible, bro. So we'll see you on Saturday, and uh, have a safe Perfect. trip. Get here safely. All right, thank you, guys. All right, my brother. All right, bye. So Corey Cass, right there, guys. Uh, one of my favorite people in the world, right there. And uh, yeah, this I'm, I'm looking forward to this tournament. It's going to be great seeing all these schools get together. Um, right now, before we shut this podcast off, I want to get Mark De La Cruz over here, yes. the uh, the head instructor of Vitruvian Martial Arts. It's a Camarillo Jiu Jitsu based school. And uh, yeah, Mark. After Mark gets through rolling with this guy, we'll get Mark over here to talk a little bit about the gym, um, where it's at, and how you guys can come and get some training in here in Visalia if you're on this side of town or you just want to try something different. Um, there's too many schools to name, but uh, they're all good, and everybody's got something different to offer. And uh, these guys, they have a lot of fun here. I like coming over here every once in a while. Solid technique. Uh, everybody's super cool here. And, uh, yeah, we'll bring Mark in right now. That's another thing, guys. We're going to be hosting. We're always looking for new spots to do our podcast, but this is our new spot. We're going to be hosting here. And uh, we also want to let people know if you got a gym or you're local and you want us to come to your gym and do a podcast to get some coverage, hit us up and we're going to be traveling around. So the traveling podcast is in effect. 
Mark, come on on here. Come on in here, bud. So guys, like, uh, here's another good friend of mine, Mark De La Cruz. Like I said in the beginning, we were all under one roof, and Mark was one of those guys, uh, one of the first guys in the first jiu-jitsu school here in Visalia. Uh, Mark, talk a little bit about your journey and experience. Well, definitely a journey. It's been a long time. Um, I think uh, about 18 years since I first walked into Jibushi Martial Arts on Main Street, the very first jiu-jitsu school in Visalia at the time. <clears throat> um, it's been awesome, man. I met a lot of great people, trials and tribulations, life gets in the way, but I've always found a way to just keep training, <clears throat> which I always tell my students to do the same, you know. There's, life's going to throw stuff at you all the time, but that shouldn't interfere with uh, training because I think doing jiu-jitsu training really helps with you dealing with outside life, you know. Building that camaraderie, trust, you know, it really helps. You know, uh, yeah, you've been around it for a while, man. Uh, since the very beginning, and uh, as you competed in MMA, and I can't even tell you how many jiu-jitsu tournaments. Uh, did you ever think, man, back then when we were in that room, did you have a vision of of this, no. like becoming a, a a teacher? I mean, what when we first were all in jiu-jitsu, it was we were young bucks. You know what I mean? We were young and we were out there. We were getting wild, uh -huh. and uh, I didn't. I had no idea that you were going to become this. You know what I mean? I'm I'm super proud of you, bro. Thank but, you. But like. After how many, how, how long in this journey did you get to the point where you go, you know what, I'm gonna buckle down under one guy, I'm gonna get, get my black belt, and then I wanna open a school and do my own thing? Well, I knew, I knew one thing was for sure is, um, I know, I remember when I walked in, I saw, like I, I saw this, told this story before, I saw Luis Gonzalez, you had a blue belt at the time, rolling with a big monster of a man, bodybuilder stature, and no need to say the name, but he was a good dude, but watch Luis just, tap him over and over and over with all these different moves but at the time I didn't know what it was I was just so impressed and I already knew jiu-jitsu was I knew what jiu-jitsu was at the time but yeah back then I had no idea I, all I knew was that I just, I just wanted to get as good as I could at this art um, and I knew it was effective so I decided to do this art I always wanted to do martial arts as a kid I did karate as a kid my mom pulled me out and because I was getting growing pain so <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, mom, you know, mom's worried, you know, so I got pulled out of that, so that the old stopped. Gr the old growing pain trick, yeah, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, so I just knew, I just knew I, I wasn't going to stop doing it. I just knew I was going to do whatever I could to not stop training and get as good as I could because I started watching black belt matches, and I was like, holy, you know what, and I was... And this was like the, these were like the beginning stages of the internet and all these videos, right? Back then? Yeah, I was I mean, watching, it was there, but it was like, it, I was watching, it was nothing like it is now. Well, though. we were watching VHS tapes of, yes. you know... VHS tapes yeah. of, of, uh, of, of, of uh, Fetosa and those guys, you know, when the Gracie camp was still up, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Back so, then you could get a, get a Hoist Gracie video. Yeah, so Mark, <laughs> I, I, so I was doing, like, because Tom asked me the same question too, as of doing different martial arts, how did you settle in, like, Jiu-Jitsu is, is my, like, my passion, like, how did you, how did it? It was, it was literally like the UFC. I saw UFC, uh, I think it was like the second one when Hoist came out. And started beating everybody yeah and I was like this guy's gonna get his ass whooped you know because he's little mm -hmm. and he's wearing a gi he's all bound <laughs> up in that thing you know I didn't even know what a gi was at the time you got that you got that you got a guest coming in guys anyhow uh, sorry about that guys That's right. um, yeah so I didn't even know what a gi was at the time but I just thought he was gonna lose you know that was my initial judgment of him because I didn't know any better you know, I didn't know really what martial arts were and how effective they could be, you know. And I think all martial arts are effective if used correctly in the correct situations. But, uh, yeah, when I saw that, I thought, man, I need to, mm -hmm. I need to learn whatever that is, that Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. I need to learn that, you know, because that's what they called it at the time. Yep. You know? I thought all Jiu-Jitsu was Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, which right. it all came from the Gracies. It's yeah. understood, you know, uh, from Japan first, obviously. But, um, you know, now it's evolved into something much bigger so it, it was go ahead it, like you go back to like the ufc one and it was it was so cool because you, you're right it was styles versus styles they would even say like they would promote like this style versus that style you right. even had the guy the boxer with the one glove and all that <laughs> and yeah you are jimerson yeah our jimerson <laughs> yeah. and it was it was gracie here against big guys because barely there wasn't the weight limits and then here you go you yeah you had a guy and it didn't look like anything had a gi on and it was almost always the same Smallest thing he guy shoots in, in gets and once he gets one 
any wrap on them, it was done. Yeah, yeah and pretty much. I think that probably, would you guys say that's kind of what really just shot jiu-jitsu? That's what got me interested and, and made me kind of understand what that art could do and understand understand what the word meant and what that martial art could do you know once i saw that i went looking for it because i joined the military short after that mm -hmm. and i was like oh you know i go in the military they're definitely going to be doing jiu-jitsu there and they didn't even know what it was i looked yellow pages this thick of all these martial arts and yep. uh not one jiu-jitsu school and yellow pages like this thick of martial arts every other martial art you could think of but not jiu-jitsu now it's the opposite <laughs> yes you know? it is the opposite now yeah. that's that's for sure now yeah. I, I remember when I was young, uh, like Moore's Karate and these Taekwondo schools, they were big, they were actually big academies, like mm -hmm. the place we're in right now. Now those places are little hole in the walls. Mm -hmm. They are, they're little hole in the walls and the Jiu Jitsu's taken over. Um, on this tournament, Mark, I, Mark, Mark is a big competitor. Uh, he just had a fight to win, professional Jiu Jitsu tournament. But I know you've also competed uh, hundreds of times in your Jiu Jitsu career. Um, what belt were you and when, did you, when was your first tournament? Why are you freaking out too? I competed in my first tournament six months into training at in-house tournament at Pacific Martial Arts, the very first Pacific Martial Arts. And Joe Surya and Cole Escovito had a super fight there at that time. And all I knew was like somewhat of a guard pass. I knew how to do a choke and I knew one throw. That's all I knew. And I competed with just that information. Wow. And uh, I almost pulled my throw off multiple times, but then I got triangled twice in a row. So ever since that tournament, I thought, I, how do I not get triangled? And so now I don't get triangled as often. <laughs> yeah, Matt, like I said earlier, Matt Smith, he's like the, uh, he was the guru of these in-house tournaments. He's, uh, he's one of the guys yeah, if it wasn't was it super was, into jiu-jitsu. Yeah, if it wasn't then. for Matt Smith, um, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Um, so hats off to him. He's yep. a good friend of mine. Um, and he's been a huge part of our success here at this gym. So, uh, Matt, much love, man. And I appreciate everything you've done for us, and, and you still do. Yes, and, we, and we continue his support. We, we, we're uh, advertising his in-house mm -hmm. Nogi uh, tournament. I'm also doing a super fight there as well. What's uh, the date on that one, bud? Uh, October 5th, I believe. Is that October, October 5th, 5th or 4th? What's that October say there? 5th, Archie? it says. October 5th. 5th, yeah, October 5th. Nice. Yeah, and I forgot the name of my opponent. He's from... Uh, up north I have another one I'm doing with grappling to the badges trying to get an opponent for that and then uh, just came off of the fight to win 123 I lost a decision against uh, Derek DeMano from Waza Jiu Jitsu he's the owner of Waza Jiu Jitsu tough guy right there was that yeah. the one in Sacramento area yeah yeah he's he, uh, I got a really sweet takedown on him that was is that like a and that was he, a sweet takedown he came back at, he came back at me with two of his own and uh, we went I felt we went back and forth pretty well. He wasn't able to solidify a submission on me, and then right at the end, I was able to get out of a really bad mount he had on me. Uh, but uh, I felt it was, a, it was a fun match. I had yeah. a really good time that with it. That takedown was amazing. And that was like at about 10 o'clock at night, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought about 10. Isn't that, is that kind of strange, fighting that late at night? Or? Jiu-Jitsu at 10 o'clock at night? It's 10 p.m. Jiu-Jitsu, folks. Yeah, it, it is sort of when you're used to training at like 6 or 7, but yeah. when it's only a few hours, it doesn't make yeah. that big of a difference. Because I, I remember I was in bed, and Eric Lindley had yeah. it on there, and he was sending me updates on Mark's fight. I'm sitting here in bed. I'm thinking, I couldn't yeah. imagine. Yeah. From what I heard, it I was one of the best. Uh, you did? Yeah. From what I heard, it was one of the best matches of the night. Yeah. Now, uh, Mark, speaking of this weekend's tournament, do you got any guys competing this weekend? At Grappling X? Uh, yeah, I've got... Uh, I did have John, but he pulled out because he wants to do the MMA thing, so uh, he's doing that. But uh, I have like six or seven kids. It's really hard to get a lot of the kids to commit to do a tournament the first time. But once they do a tournament the first time, they fall in love with it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just getting them to to get out there that one time. So I, I try to encourage the kids to come out and support, so they can see their teammates out there. So they say, well, hey, they, you know, Johnny did it. I can yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I roll with him all the time. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yes. So. If That's they, why we're bringing John out there. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, I think it's really important that uh, kids or adults compete at least once. They they should know what it feels like because mm -hmm. it's going to be the same mental block and the same anxiety that you're going to capture if you're having to defend yourself in real life. Um, speaking of which, is one of our MMA fighters here. His debut. I remember uh, I was putting Vaseline on his on the high points of his head, you know, his face before he stepped in and. He told me that um, he couldn't feel his legs, and he think he had, thought he had a drilling dump. And I said, "Yeah, you did." Yeah. You know, and I said, "Just go in there and do your best." So it didn't, you know, it didn't really matter. But he knows what 
to feel like he knows what to expect now and that's part of training you know so I think that's why it's important that people should compete at least once so they know what that that feeling is like you know? so Mark what, what is adrenaline I've heard that too is that where basically you're so nervous all your energy just leaves you or, or what uh, it, it's one of your glands that creates um, like a adrenaline basically and when it does that your body at that moment needs to move and if you don't move then it really it's like it's like crashing after an energy drink you know and then you feel like you got nothing you know yes yeah. i've I had that it. feeling i didn't I've know had, what it was though. yeah I've, was. I've, I've had that before in a fight and i felt like i couldn't even hardly walk you know walking out to the cage i felt like it was like stepping up the stairs i felt like i was gassed out already and i was getting ready to fight i remember that same feeling and i know exactly what he was feeling so there was nothing that i could have said that would have changed yeah. that i just told him hey just don't worry about it just go out there and do your best you know and now afterwards i've talked to him about it so he understands it when you understand it yeah. you start to get those feelings you don't let them overtake your body you need to settle down and relax you know and now so, he's got that first one down yeah. yeah he seems like a really good kid man yeah yeah, he uh, yeah he seems like a nice kid and it, that's so you're you're gonna go to the uh, the tournament and then are you gonna go corner him? Um, no, night? I'm actually refing for Corey Cass at the Grappling X. Uh, I have a lot of fun refing and um, I you know I do I don't care what anyone says. Refing refing jujitsu tournaments is such a hard job. Yes, um, sir. You know I don't care who you are. You're gonna make a mistake. Um, even the best referees make mistakes. It's tough. If you can Parents go through a pissed. tournament and not make too many mistakes. You hats off to that person because it's difficult, you know. Um, and it, it does it does make it worse if you know parents or people are like, hey, ref, you know. It's just like, dude, you're watching the match, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's just it's a little difficult to ref, but I like enjoying it. I like enjoy doing it because I feel that I, I'm fairly good at it, and I'd I'd rather have you know someone out there refing who wants to be there than someone out there refing because they were asked to ref and they don't have anybody else. So I'd rather be the one to go out there and help since I'd rather. Help. Yeah. I think you're if guys like you are. You know what I mean. You, Mondo Diaz, and a lot of these guys that compete um, that are locally. You're you're a good ref, Mark. Thank you. Um, I, I think Mondo's a really good ref too. Uh, yes, he, he's, ref, he's, ref. he's ref one of my matches before. Um, although the cool thing about fight to win is you know you don't have to score points, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. But <laughs> but uh, no, Still he does, gotta have he does, a good ref though. You no, know, he does a good job. He does with because he he uh, refs all over the all over the state in different tournaments and stuff. But he does a really good job. So uh, good job, Mondo. Just. Uh, Hats off to you for being a great ref out there. Now, not only being a ref, uh, when you when you bring your kids to these tournaments, I mean, is it more on the parent? You think the more, the parents are tripping out more than the kid? The kids just going out there to have fun. It seems like. Do you ever see like the parents just getting worked up yeah, and, and overstressed you know, about it? It's not as bad as like soccer and baseball games, but <laughs> you know. And, and that's something that I've it's, noticed. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it's not as bad. Not as bad. No, like you that, go to huh? a soccer game, man. I've only yeah. been to like a few, and I could not believe how some of the parents were acting. Yeah, yeah get it was alcohol bad. involved. Yeah, I think at the jujitsu tournaments, everybody knows. Okay, well, almost most of these parents, some of them train. You know, yeah. probably shouldn't get too mouthy with people. I could people. get choked here. If <laughs> yeah, I well, not a good idea. So you tend to see not as much of that at the jujitsu tournaments. Um, occasionally, you're going to get someone out there that just has no respect for the art. They they don't understand it, so they say the wrong thing, you know, and that happens. But, you know, that's now gonna, your son. He competes too. Yeah, Devin competes. Now, when he, when your son went out there, for, he's got a great coach for one. But uh, when your son went out there for the first time, what was that feeling like for you? Because you've already competed all these times. Oh man, you know what? It was. Oh, that's just as nervous. As, I felt as nervous as my first MMA fight when he was out there getting ready to compete. I was more nervous than him, and he didn't even know what was going on. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, he got destroyed his first tournament. And uh, he does pretty well now, but he, he's basically doing it as a hobby. Yeah. He, he doesn't compete to go and be he's the number one. I just want him to go out there and improve from the last tournament. That's all I care about. So, and he's making improvements, and he's playing flag football and other stuff too. But all right. Yeah, I just want him to, to do as best he can and improve, make improvement. And he's coming a long way. So he's been doing it since he was in diapers. So. Mm. Yeah, when I came in here last time and trained, he was just he just seemed like a real happy kid, just playing around in the gym. That's what you want to see. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. guys, we're gonna close this podcast up. Um, we want to really thank you, Mark, for letting us come in. Like I said, guys, we're, gonna, we're probably going to be doing the podcast here quite a bit. So uh, take the take the chance, man, to come in and meet Mark and myself and John and Archie. And Mark's guys, he's got a great gym here. A lot of super cool dudes here. And uh, give us some maybe a little breakdown of the schedule when people can come in, Mark. Yeah, so we do. Uh, we have 5.30 a.m. classes. Um, I've been doing that. Uh, I got the word zombie from Dan, Dan Camarillo, because he does zombie classes. And he called his early morning classes zombie. So I picked up the name. And 
we've been doing zombies for six years we those early morning classes but uh we have them monday through friday 5 30 a.m to 6 30 is a great group, group of guys and gals and then uh it's a it's a pretty full class you'd be surprised at 5 30 a.m but uh then we have 10 a.m's like today tuesdays and thursdays and then we have 6 30 every day and we have no gi 6 30 p.m on tuesday thursdays uh for jujitsu and then kids we've got monday through friday and saturday so there's plenty of classes uh to fit anyone's schedule pretty much mark yeah. when uh yeah that's a ton of classes that's great when is the good time for someone that's just first time on the mat oh somebody out there i know there's gonna be someone that's anytime. right now that's nervous to get on the mat anytime the first thing what i would suggest is step through the doors step through the doors sit down meet talk to some of the people who are already doing it and see what they're doing on the mat and it's more intimidating to see from the outside than it is on the inside mm. so i think the first challenge is just step through the doors and we offer a free trial so there's no commitment you can come in and train all week long you know, just mention this podcast and you get a free week of training uh, any any martial art that we offer you know, muay thai or jiu-jitsu mma and then we also have a combative class that we do twice a month and we get a lot of people who don't have to commit to that um, in any shape, way, or form. Nurses, um, moms, grandmas come in, learn jujitsu, how to use it in the street. You know, so uh, we have a Gracie certified combatives instructor that teaches that one. Um, and he donates his time to, to show technique in that class. So. Sweet. Well, there it is, guys. Uh, another great place to train. Um, Join, keep in tune too because uh, MMA Fight Pass we're doing another Inside the Dojo and uh, this next one's going to be sweet uh, we're going to be at King's Muay Thai in Fresno where one of the students Ashley Thinner just came back from Korea after winning gold in Muay Thai so we'll keep you posted on that uh, and like I said earlier we want to go to all these gyms around the area you know we're excited to be doing this it's, it's really fun to be doing this if you want to have our podcast in your dojo we can uh, you know what I mean we can promote you we can learn something and we can all have a great time so, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. If you didn't see it live, you can watch it later. And thank you again, Archie, for getting us going. Thank you, thank Archie. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mark Dela Cruz. Thank you, thank you Tom. And Appreciate this beautiful it. gym we're at. Thank you, John. Thanks for having us, Mark. All right. Nice.